Hi everyone, I'm Manuel here. In today's video, we're going to talk about one of the most interesting but also one of the less understood material parameters available in a PBR material, which is anisotropy. I'll explain how it works in a pragmatic way and show some examples of how to use it. Remember, if you like the videos, you can support the channel via Patreon or you can buy some of the plugins and assets available in Gumroad. In order to understand anisotropy, I'll use Substance Designer. While you can replicate what I'm going to do in almost any render available, this designer allows us to quickly see how the maps are interacting between them. So let's get started. First, let's try to understand anisotropy as a concept. For example, let's create a simple square with a shape node and connect it to a non-uniform blur. If you are not familiar with the nodes, don't worry too much about it. I'm only using them to have a visual aid. And if you are curious, you can always check the node you node series in this channel. Think of this square as a reflection of an area light. Now, if I increase the intensity, the shape is getting blurry. The blurriness will be the same as adding roughness to a material. This blurriness or roughness is being applied evenly, in all directions. Now, if we reduce the samples and set the place to 4, we can understand better what is happening, since there are only 4 directions, top, bottom, left and right. Now, as soon as we add anisotropy into the mix, the top and bottom blurriness is diminishing, while the left and right stays the same. What is happening here is that we are adding directionality to the blurriness or roughness. Think of it as a directional smudge, like when you draw a line in the car window with your finger on a rainy day. Basically, when you add anisotropy, you are aligning all the micro imperfections of the surface in the same direction, and as a result, the reflection of the lights stretches alongside such direction. With that example in mind, let's check how we can use it in a real material, for example, this glossy metal surface. Usually anisotropy is defined by two maps or values. The first one called anisotropy or anisotropy level, that will define the intensity of the effect, and an anisotropy angle or rotation, that usually will be a value in the range of 0 to 1 and will represent the direction of the smudge we mentioned earlier. Now, before we start playing with the values, it's worth remembering that anisotropy is aligning the micro imperfections of the surface, which means that we need at least some imperfections, and the parameter that defines the amount of micro imperfections is the roughness or glossiness map. So if the roughness is set to 0 or the glossiness to 1, you won't be able to see the effect, since there are no imperfections that can be aligned. Now, let's begin by finding a nice reflection. Increase the anisotropy level, and as you can see, the light reflection begins to get a left and right directionality, just like the square shape, and the closer to 1, the bigger the effect. But you need to be careful, because if we set it all the way to 1, you will redirect all the reflection rays, and the material will look more like a perfectly diffuse material. Most renderers are configured in a way that this cannot happen, so even if you set anisotropy to 1 or 100, it will still work. But here in Substance Designer, it matters, so with the value of 1, it breaks. And since in our case the material is a metal, it looks black, because there are no more reflection rays bouncing towards the camera. If we change it to a non-metal material, also known as the electric, you can see how it looks like a perfectly diffuse material with no reflections whatsoever. And if we reduce the anisotropy level to almost 1, like 0 0.99, the reflections are back. Let's make it metallic again. Another important thing is that the anisotropy level and the roughness or glossiness maps are fully related, so you will need to balance them both in order to get the desired result. For example, if I increase the roughness even a little, the anisotropy have more surface imperfections to align and the looks change a lot. And if we reduce it, the anisotropy effect diminishes, since there are few surface imperfections. Now, if we increase the roughness and reduce the anisotropy level, the length of the direction as much decreases, giving it a more glossy look. Finally, it's important to note that depending on the renderer, the direction of the anisotropy some of the times depends on the UV maps. For example, here in Modo, if we rotate 90 degrees the UVs of the face, the result will be the same as changing the anisotropy rotation by 90 degrees. So remember, if you want to use anisotropy, first, you need to have at least some roughness, 
Second, avoid setting the isotropy all the way to 1. Third, you will always need to balance the roughness and the isotropy level. And fourth, if necessary, check the orientation of your UVs. Now let's talk about the angle. Most renderers like Redshift, Octane, Arnold, etc. will have a 0 to 1 value for the rotation, which can be translated to a range from 0 to 360 degrees, where 0 0.1 to 5 is 45 degrees, 0 0.25 is 90 degrees, and 0 0.5 is 180 degrees. Basically, what this means is that after 0 0.5, all the direction values will be repeated. For example, 0 and 1 are the same, 0 0.25 and 0 0.75 are the same, and 0 0.125 and 0 0.625 are the same. An easy way to visualize it is with some gray lines. As you can see, we have 0, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, and 1, which are the same as 0, 90, 180, 270, and 360. And as we increase the number of gray line values, a semicircular shape representing all the angles begins to appear. And it repeats itself. As you can see, an isotropy can be an amazing tool, because now we can literally bend the light reflections as we want. Now let's check out how we can make some cool anisotropy effects. The first one is the most classic one, the one we find in some cooking pots or pans, like the ones you can see in these images. To create it, we can start with a green linear one rotated 90 degrees and a Cartesian to polar. Or a gradient circular with default settings. We can add some extra noise, so let's add some anisotropic noise and a Cartesian to polar. And blend them with that song. We're almost done. As you can see, this setup creates a noticeable line in some renders. In order to remove it, we can create a mask with a gradient linear one and a curve node. In the curve node, set the curve similar to a sign with three points. With the first one in zero, with a value of zero, and the curve control at 0 0.25. The second one in 0 0.5 with a value of 1 and the curve control in 0 0.25 and 0 0.75 respectively. And the third point in 1 with a value of 0 and the curve control in 0 0.75. Then add a Cartesian to polar node and an auto levels. We'll use this as a mask to blend the circular gradient on itself after we rotate it 180 degrees. Again, this works because the anisotropy angle repeats after the 0 0.5 value. Now, if we blend this with anisotropic noise, we get the result we're looking for. Now let's try to use this map in some renderers. For example, here in Cycles. The material is just a metal with some roughness and some anisotropy and the map as the anisotropy rotation. Now here is the same effect in Arnold. The material is basically the same, a metal with a little bit of roughness, anisotropy and the map as the rotation. Here again is in V-Ray, exactly the same type of material, a metal with a little bit of roughness and anisotropy and the map as the rotation. And here it is in Modo, but Modo is a special case, since it requires a different type of map that uses the red and blue channels to set the angle. 
For that scenario, I created a designer filter that can convert the anisotropic grayscale maps into a model-friendly format. That way you can use the same map in all renderers. You can find it on Patreon for free for all patrons and in my Gumroad. The links are in the description. Another example that we can make is the Damascus steel. And it's pretty straightforward to do. We can create a multidirectional warp, connect two noises like the clouds 2 and the pearly noise, when each input and increase the intensity. Then connect it to the anisotropy angle output, adjust the anisotropy level, and we'll have a good base for a Damascus steel material. The last example is the carbon fiber. For this one, we change the shader to a decoded PBR. And I'll use my web generator node available for free for the patrons of the $5 tier, or you can buy it on Gumbro. Let's add an isotropic noise and blend it with a rotated version of itself, using the warp as the mask. We can use the same mask and a gradient map to set the base color. And if the strands are too strong, we can add levels after the noise and adjust it as needed. There you go, now we have a quick carbon fiber material. As you can see, anisotropic maps are not that difficult if you know the basics and creating them can be pretty straightforward if you understand how the grayscale map is bending the light reflections. Also remember that anisotropic is not exclusive for metallic materials. Look at pearl materials, for example the pickguard of this guitar. Anyway, now it's time for you to experiment with it. And if you're one of the first 5 people to contact me via Twitter with a cool anisotropic material you made, I'll give you one of my products for free. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below, and remember to like and subscribe.